back again today and um, been thinking about this screen frame all night long. So finally I sent a video to my mate Ray and um, he said that can happen but once you put the windscreen in because the lower part of the frame, this area here, is sort of like the softest, the most flexible. So once you put the screen in, that should force it out and it will level itself out as it should be. So um, I'm going to attempt to put the screen in today. I haven't done one of these for years um, and I've never done a front windscreen. I've only done like little side glances in the past. But the principle of it is that you uh, get the rubber in then lubricate the rubber and using a piece of string force the windscreen in. But first you've got to get the rubber in. Um, I was doing it the wrong way. The idea is that you put the rubber on the screen first and then the uh, complete thing onto the windshield frame. Um, it caused me a lot of grief and at that point I wasn't in the frame of mind for um, switching on the camera and it wouldn't have made pretty viewing anyway. But after a lot of effort I finally got it in and all that's left now is the chrome strip which goes and locks the screen in place and um, another job over and done with. Today I'm going to fit in the rocker shaft with the rockers and this is it. I've been building it up at home We're on the new rocker bar shaft. So that'll go in and um, I could say I could finally bolt down the rocker cover but I'm going to have to adjust tappets and things like that which I'll do at a later date. <coughs> Right, so there's another little job done and just to double check that everything is fine, I've turned over the engine to make sure that none of the valves are hitting any of the pistons and that everything is still timed up as it should be because I haven't altered the timing in any way but yet everything is moving exactly the way it should. So my next job is to fit the steering shaft and um, the donut on this one has started to split. It's got a split there and a split there. So it's, um, it's usable but I've got a new one instead. Alright, just changed the rubber on the steering shaft and um, fitted it in. It was a bit tricky, a bit tight going in but finally got that in so the steering is now connected up to the rack again. The other thing that I've done is fitted a radiator. Uh, it's been sitting at home for ages so I'm kind of glad to get it out. I've always worried that I'm going to do some damage to it somehow. So the fact that I've got no more work to do behind here now uh, meant that I can fit it in and that's now sitting there permanently and I've put some hoses on as well. I bought a brand new set of hoses so every hose will get changed on this car. The other thing that's been niggling me for a while, it's a silly thing and probably wouldn't bother anyone else but I hate these little blue cheap DIY looking crimp tags. They look really bad, they look they look like just someone's had a go at the car and I don't like them. Um, so I got on Amazon the other day and I looked around and I, I found a really nice set um, which is more like the original. And you can see here where I've changed one. How, do, how nice does that look in comparison to that rotten little blue thing that was there um, on the coil? There's various sizes in this box um, and I don't know whether I've got enough of the size I need to do all the, all the little tags that need doing. 
and it's pretty much all of them because if they haven't got like these blue DIY rotten things on there the original ones which are brown and discolored so um, I want a change of these with the set that I've got um, as, as many as I can and mainly the ones that are most visible is what I'll go for to begin with when you look at how nice that one's turned out uh, you wouldn't think anything other than it came out the factory like that one of the things that I have decided to do um, is to replace all these panels um, inside the car you can see from the back of this one which sits down by the uh, footwell on the transmission tunnel that's right? like it's falling to pieces and even these ones which sit on sort of like the uh, rear quarters around the uh, wheel arch um, I've seen better days and of course the the door panels themselves although the vinyl is in good enough condition apart from whoever painted it previously decided to sort of paint the door panels with it but uh, looking behind here this is all warped and uneven and, and horrible um, and so something I want to try is to remake these I could go out and buy them but I'll end up doing quite a few hundred quid if I go that route whereas I could and I think I could possibly make them so I'm going to start off with a simple one what I think is a simple one it's this one first of all um, I, I don't like this this grill that's on there so that one that won't be staying that can go straight away yeah so I'll try and make this panel first of all um, I'll make a pair of these and see how I go um, and that will that will sort of dictate um, whether I want to carry on doing it doing it this way or just go out and bleed and buy them so my first job is going to be to take this vinyl off so I can get to the hardboard itself So um, yeah, as you can see, this one is completely annihilated and it looks like in the past someone's had a go at repairing this by adding these little strengtheners between what were the brakes. So what I've got to do is kind of join it all up like that, make a pattern and cut out a new piece of hardboard. Now that don't sound too difficult. I've just gone out and bought myself a large sheet, uh, two meters long by uh, 60 centimeters wide, three millimeter hardboard, which is the same as this, same width as that. Not that it makes too much of a difference anyway. Um, yeah, that whole sheet cost me just over a tenner, so I'm going to get good value out of that. So now the next stage is for me to press these on here. and make a template. Now what I'm going to do is mark around it. Like that. So uh, I'll just get that on the um, can do it with a blade but I'm going to get that on my bandsaw and cut the shape out so that's the panel cut next I'm going to need to cover that little bit in foam now I've got some of this uh, got it from a car upholsterers 
uh, Martrim. They're very good. Um, it's called Scrim Foam. Now all I need to do is just draw around this. And do you know what? In theory, if the other one is... Um, yeah, if the other one's identical, I'll get two bits out of this little one area. So the next thing is the vinyl. Now I had this roll from left over from another project, so um, it's black, it's not too shiny, which I like. So I think this is like the perfect stuff. So what I need to do is uh, obviously face it the right way, which is this way. I'll draw a template out around that, and um, then I can start gluing that in as well. So obviously um, when cutting out the vinyl I need to leave enough to wrap around the back end here uh, so that it will stick. So first of all I'm going to draw the shape. Oh, fairly roughly. And from this end, work out roughly what I want to have wrapped around. Um, I could almost say about sort of that much, really. Even a little bit more. So I'm allowing myself 20 millimeters all around. So I'll just mark that. Drop this in. Okay. So 
now the next part is to fold all these bits around. That's now gone tacky, so I can start pulling this in. Right, so now that's all glued in place, and there we have one really nice panel. It's a shame I haven't got the other one here. I'd like to have done the pair of these today, but no problem. I can just uh, do something else for now. That little um, panel turned out so well, I've now decided that I'm going to recover all of my panels and um, give them all that sort of um, deep sponge look as well because this is the back panel that goes um, behind the back seats between the well, the area which would be a back seat rather um, and um, yeah I could have got away with this just by cleaning it but I just fancy for the hell of it recovering it and there we have a really luxurious panel now that, that's um, so much better than the original version, which was well, it wasn't really even padded. It just had a bit of cloth behind it. But this is deeply padded. This is going to be a lot nicer on the car. And I'll now just continue and finish off the other panels. And then eventually, uh, which is going to be hardest, is the um, are the door panels. The saga of the uh, windscreen frame still continues. Um, th this has done my head in more than any other part of the car. Just couldn't work out what was going on. This screen has been on and off so many times now. It's, um, it's become ridiculous. I've had Ray on the phone like a dozen times suggesting I suppose what are standard things when setting up one of these things, so they take a little bit of a setup. And um, I even contacted Elling from, um, oh God, there's a bloody rat. That's huge. Anyway, I even contacted Elling from uh, My Rusty Beauties. Um, for those of you who don't know him, he is like the godfather of TR6s. Um, I think it's in Canada. He's really, really good. Um, anyway, I messaged him and he kindly messaged me back. Also made the same suggestions that Ray had made as well. So obviously there are standard things you've got to do, but none of those worked. So the problem has always been that there's been a larger gap along here than anywhere else. And no matter how much I tighten it, it the rubber wouldn't sit nicely. Um, and now what I did was I took the bottom rubber off of the frame so I could see clearly where the gap was and there was a definite gap down here like it bowed down a little bit so what I did was um, using the jack and a piece of wood I pumped up the panel from inside underneath the dashboard and got it roughly to shape and then skimmed over it and um, I think that's going to be the fix. Unfortunately, that means I've got to sort of primer and repaint this panel. But in the long run, it's um, a small price to pay for what I'm going for is some kind of perfection or Johnny's version of perfection, at least. In between all of that, um, every so often I'd let go of the windscreen and go and do something else so I could calm down. So I'll. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I sprayed the um, oil um, filter cover in the same green as I did the brake lines and I fitted that. And I also fitted a new um, engine mounting for this side, that one's okay. Uh, that weren't a terrible job, it just jacked up um, from the bottom of the engine and took the old one out and slipped the new one in. 
I've also, um, 99% permanently fitted this wing now and adjusted this door as best as I can for now. I don't know if it'll need any more adjustments. Um, I'm getting wound up about gaps and thinking how small they should be, not as they are, but everyone goes on about um, how notoriously bad the door gaps were on these cars coming out the factory. So yes, I could really spend a long time and make the gaps as tight as possible. And I've seen guys out there who've done amazing jobs with that, but oh, I think I'm running out of steam, to be honest with you. I know I say it all the time lately, but um, I don't think I will ever want to do another restoration project ever again. I think um, th there's a guy I follow on, on YouTube called Matt Armstrong, young boy, um, and he repairs salvage cars, self-taught, that's brilliantly. And he then went and bought a six series BMW and um, when he was analysing it, he said something and it made real sense. He said, there's a lot more work in this six series than there is in any of the salvage cars I've ever done. And that made me think, yeah, he's right. Because do you know what? You go out and buy a salvage car. I know it's not a pretty little classic, but you go out and buy a salvage car, a car that you really like and you're getting it at a bit of a bargain price. And all you've got to deal with is the area that's crashed, the front corner, the rear end, the side, whatever. But you're only concentrating on that area. With classic cars, you're literally going over every single nut and bolt, right across from front to back. It's not just one area of restoration, it's a total restoration. I mean, yeah, you could do a, you know, like a bit like what I did with the MG, a very light restoration, and that was all right. That was actually that was quite fun to do. Um, but with this one, this car deserves to to be done to a high standard. This this is like now I'm in the league of the big boys with the TR6. Um, but yeah, never again.